The Arkansas Historic Preservation Program presents Arkansas's Haunted Historic Cemeteries. In every community in Arkansas and around the United States, there are cemeteries. Maybe you never thought much about them when you pass them in your car. Maybe you have been to your local cemetery to visit the grave of a loved one, or maybe you've taken part in the Southern tradition of decoration during the month of May. In order to understand how important cemeteries are to our communities, first you have to know a few terms. What is a cemetery? A burial ground not directly connected to a particular church or congregation. In the earliest days of European settlement in Arkansas, families generally created private cemeteries on their own land. Public cemeteries became more popular in the 19th century, especially in larger towns or settlements. These are much more than just a place to remember those who have passed on. Cemeteries are outdoor history museums. They tell us a good deal about those who lived in our communities in the past. Cemeteries are botanical gardens. Families plant flowers and trees to beautify them. Cemeteries are art galleries. Grave markers are a kind of sculpture and reflect the values, beliefs, and resources available to a specific community in a way that other kinds of art do not. Grave markers also teach us about the past through iconography. Iconography is a symbolic representation of a person, place, or thing. Cemeteries generally include a large amount of iconography, particularly cemeteries from the Victorian era. All the cemeteries featured in this video come from the Victorian era, and so they are rich in symbolism. Often, this symbolism is very personal and specific to a family or individual. However, there are many motifs or symbols in cemeteries that are more generally popular. Here are just a few icons and their meanings. Ferns symbolize honesty, sincerity, and frankness. A finger pointing up symbolizes the idea that the deceased has entered into heaven. An inverted torch symbolizes that the flame of life has been snuffed out. A shepherd's crook and linked chain are symbols of the fraternal organization, the independent order of the Odd Fellows. Many fraternal organizations include their own symbols on grave markers. A rose symbolizes motherhood, love, grief, and beauty. A living cross symbolizes belief in life after death. Now let's take a tour of four cemeteries listed on the National Register of Historic Places and the spooky stories associated with them. While the history of the places we'll talk about today is very much based in fact, the ghost stories themselves are considered folklore. What is folklore? Traditional stories, customs, sayings, dances, or other art forms preserved by a specific culture, generally through word of mouth. All ghost stories are considered folklore. You will have to make up your own mind about whether or not you believe them. The first cemetery on our tour is Mount Holly in Little Rock. Mount Holly is often called the Westminster Abbey of Arkansas because of the number of prominent Arkansans buried there. There are 11 former Arkansas governors, 4 United States Senators, 14 Arkansas Supreme Court Justices, 22 mayors of the city of Little Rock, and 4 Confederate generals buried at Mount Holly. The earliest settlers in Little Rock buried their dead in family plots on personal property. One such cemetery was owned by Robert Crittenden at 7th and Rock Streets, the current site of the Albert Pike Hotel. Crittenden was the first acting governor of the Arkansas Territory. It was the only cemetery used in Little Rock until around 1828. By that time, Chester Ashley, the third U.S. Senator from Arkansas, who owned a good deal of what is now the city of Little Rock, donated land at Capitol and Gain Streets for a public cemetery, the current site of the Federal Building. In 1843, the public cemetery at Capitol and Gain Streets was filling up, so a new cemetery was needed. Chester Ashley and businessman Roswell Beebe donated four city blocks of land for Mount Holly. 
After Mount Holly was established, many of the graves at the old public cemetery at Capitol and Gaines were moved to the new site. One of the bodies moved at this time was that of Elizabeth Quaddy Brown Henley Ross, the wife of Cherokee Chief John Ross. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 forced thousands of Native Americans to move west from their homes in North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi to the newly created Indian Territory in what is now Oklahoma. Tens of thousands of Native Americans died on this journey, called the Trail of Tears. On the trek to Oklahoma, it is said that Quaddy Ross gave away her only blanket to a freezing child. She was not rewarded for her generosity. She died of pneumonia near Little Rock in 1839. Her grave was moved around 1860 and a marker erected in the 1930s. Elias Nelson Conway was the governor of Arkansas from 1852 to 1860. He was the brother of the first governor of Arkansas, James Sevier Conway. They were part of a group called The Family, a network of interrelated families who controlled Arkansas politics before the Civil War. Elias Conway's brother, Henry, was killed in a duel with Robert Crittenden, who owned the first private cemetery in Little Rock. This created a rivalry between the Conways and their allied families and Crittenden supporters. As governor, Elias Conway's biggest accomplishments related to the state's takeover of the School for the Blind and the restructuring of banks. John Gould Fletcher was a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. He was born in Little Rock and lived during his childhood at the Pike Fletcher Terry home, which later became important because of his sister Aldolphine Terry's work in the Civil Rights Movement. Although Fletcher spent most of his career in England, he later returned home to Arkansas, where he met and married the well-known writer Charlie May Simon. They lived in what was then far west Little Rock, in a home they called John's Wood on Cantrell Road. The first spooky story associated with Mount Holly goes back to its earliest days. At the time, Mount Holly was a favorite picnic spot for families on Sunday afternoons. One Sunday, the Williams family was enjoying a beautiful afternoon in the cemetery. At that time, Arch Street passed through the center of the cemetery. A number of people strolling down Arch Street that day heard hoofbeats and then saw a young man named Robert Kincaid riding a horse he borrowed from the Williams family. Kincaid was wearing a blue shirt, a brown jacket, and a soft hat. As the Williams family saw Kincaid, he appeared to vanish before their eyes. Someone marked the time, 5.30 p.m. The Williams family arrived home to find one of their daughters distraught, sure that something terrible had happened to Robert Kincaid. The next day, a messenger arrived at the Williams home. Kincaid and his horse had been shot dead. When the Williams family asked what time, the messenger said, 5.30 p.m. When they asked what he was wearing, the messenger told them a brown jacket, a blue shirt, and a soft hat. In 1884, the graves of 640 Confederate soldiers at Mount Holly were dug up and moved to the Oakland Cemetery, another public cemetery opened specifically to handle the large number of Civil War dead in Little Rock. Many people say that this exhumation was the cause of many strange events that have been witnessed at Mount Holly. Visitors have reported hearing flute music, drum beats, and horse hooves. Many of these experiences happened during the day with no logical explanation for their appearance. People in Victorian era dress have also been seen walking the grounds and disappearing before the eyes of witnesses. People who live in the neighborhood around Mount Holly have reported seeing stones from the cemetery suddenly appear in their yards. In 2003, one neighbor went outside to call her cat and was startled to see a 12-foot-high marker from the cemetery just a few feet from her back steps. She went inside to get her husband, but when they returned, the stone was gone. The next stop on our tour of haunted cemeteries is the Fort Smith National Cemetery. The Fort Smith National Cemetery is one of 146 national cemeteries in the United States. Mostly veterans and their families are buried at cemeteries like this, but also some important politicians or others who serve the government are buried in them too. 
the old burial ground of the original fort smith was designated a national cemetery in eighteen sixty seven there are more than three hundred burials conducted every year and more than thirteen thousand burials in the cemetery probably the most famous burial at the cemetery is that of judge isaac parker often called the hanging judge because of the large number of criminals he sentenced to hang at fort smith after the civil war many people were starving homeless and angry some young men who had been guerrilla fighters wanted to continue their violent lifestyle and became criminals some of these famous criminals include the james gang and the buck gang outlaws were popularized throughout the country due to dime novels which told exaggerated tales of their exploits many outlaws hid in indian territory because they would be generally out of the reach of the united states government something needed to be done to fight this crime in 1872, the federal court was moved from Van Buren to Fort Smith, and one of the old barracks buildings was converted into a courtroom in jail. Judge Isaac Parker was appointed to oversee the federal court at Fort Smith in 1875. Judge Parker tried 13,490 cases, 344 were capital offenses, he handed down 9,454 convictions, 160 men and women were sentenced to death by hanging, and 79 were actually hanged. Judge Parker hired marshals to pursue criminals hiding out in Indian Territory. They had a very dangerous job, and many of them died in service to the court. The most famous marshal was a former slave named Bass Reeves, who served as a federal peace officer for 32 years. Hangings at Fort Smith were popular affairs and reported all over the United States. Judge Parker was a very hardworking man and became famous for the number of men he sentenced to hang. Despite this, he actually opposed the death penalty, but handed down the sentence because it was the law. Parker worked six days a week, 10 hours a day. He stayed on the bench for 21 years. In 1896, the court was moved to Oklahoma and Judge Parker retired. He died just a few weeks later. Many people claim that the courtroom and the gallows are haunted by former court workers and people who were hanged by the court. One such story suggests that you can see the ropes on the gallows swinging even when there is no wind. Others claim to hear a gavel banging in the old courtroom despite the fact that no one is there. The spookiest story happened just a couple of blocks away at the Fort Smith National Cemetery. One night in December 1998, a groundskeeper at the cemetery left some of his tools in a shed on the grounds. Even though it was late at night, he went to retrieve them. As he walked across the cemetery toward the shed, he thought he heard footsteps behind him. He stopped and turned around. He didn't see anything, so he turned back to his task. He retrieved his tools from the shed and started back across the cemetery. This time he took a flashlight with him. As he started to walk, he heard the footsteps again. When he turned around, he caught an old man in the light. It took the groundskeeper a minute to realize that he could see through the man. The transparent gentleman was wearing a rumpled black suit and had wild white hair and a white beard. The groundskeeper recognized him right away. The groundskeeper asked the apparition what he wanted, but the ghost only raised his hand, pointed at the groundskeeper, and began to move his mouth, but no sound came out. Realizing he could do nothing about the situation, the groundskeeper turned and ran to his truck. He no longer works for the cemetery and says he never will again. The next stop on our tour is Linwood Cemetery in Paragould. Paragould is located on Crowley's Ridge, one of the six natural divisions of Arkansas. The area was first settled in 1821 by Benjamin Crowley, who later gave the ridge itself his name. Benjamin Crowley originally owned land that was sunk by the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. The New Madrid earthquakes were devastating to parts of Arkansas, Missouri, and Tennessee. At one point, the earthquake caused the Mississippi River to run backwards. Crowley instead settled 12 miles from present-day Paragould. In 1882, two rail lines met at the present-day site of Paragould. 
Within a year, a new town was formed. The town was named after the men who owned the railroads, Mr. Paramore and Mr. Gould. In 1885, just two years after Paragould was founded, the city established Linwood Cemetery. Today is at about 50 acres in size and around 8,000 individuals are interred there. One of the most famous burials at Linwood Cemetery is former Arkansas Governor J. Marion Futrell, who served during the Great Depression era. In 1920, several prominent citizens built the Linwood Mausoleum on the highest point in the cemetery. The mausoleum cost $30,000 to build and holds spaces for 160 burials. The most infamous burial at Linwood Mausoleum is Frank Jelly Nash, often called the most successful bank robber in American history. He spent part of his childhood in Paragould, where his father owned a hotel. In 1923, Nash and the Spencer gang robbed the Katy Limited, a postal train in Oklahoma. He was convicted of the robbery and sent to federal prison at Leavenworth, Kansas to serve a 25-year sentence. In 1930, Nash became the deputy warden's chef and handyman. One day, he was sent outside the prison on an errand and never returned. After his escape from Leavenworth Prison, Frank Nash hid out in Hot Springs with his third wife. Hot Springs was a popular destination for mobsters during this time period. On June 16, 1933, Frank Nash was arrested by two FBI agents, Frank Smith and F. Joseph Lackey. They put him on a train and sent him north to Kansas City, Missouri. From there, they intended to take him by car back to Leavenworth Prison in Kansas. The next morning, when the train arrived in Kansas City, the FBI agents who were transporting Nash were attacked by famous mobsters Adam Rochetti and Pretty Boy Floyd. Frank Nash was killed in the crossfire. Known as the Union Station Massacre, the killing of Frank Nash and four law enforcement officers, including two FBI agents, shocked the country. The FBI was given many more powers after the incident. Frank Nash's sister, Alice Nash Long, claimed his body and buried him at the Linwood Mausoleum. His funeral was said to have attracted hundreds of mourners most of them assumed to be mobsters from around the country. Local ghost hunters have declared Linwood Cemetery a certified haunted place. Some say a little girl wanders through the mausoleum at night, and that if you listen closely, you can hear her walking on the marble floor. They have also collected what they call EVP recordings of voices in the cemetery and near the mausoleum. According to author Edward Underwood, the EVPs seem to be taunting the paranormal investigators. He believes that this taunting tone is the voice of Frank Nash, leading the ghosts of the cemetery to mock the living. The final stop on our haunted cemetery tour is Maple Hill in Helena. Helena, West Helena has some of the richest history in the state. Helena sits at the southernmost edge of Crowley's Ridge. The city is surrounded by many steep hills that are part of the ridge. The history of Europeans in the area begins as far back as the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto, who crossed the Mississippi River near the town in 1541. Other famous explorers who came to the area were the French priest Father Jacques Marquette and the trader Louis Jolette, who stopped near Helena in July 1673. Helena is in Phillips County. It was named after Sylvanus Phillips, who settled in the area in 1797. In 1815, Mr. Phillips moved to the present site of the city of Helena, which he named after his daughter. In 1820, 16 years before Arkansas became a state, Phillips County was formed. The city of Helena was named the county seat in 1830 and incorporated in 1833. The first cemetery in Helena was at Graveyard Hill, located off Beach Street. During the Civil War, the Union took control of Helena in the summer of 1863. The Confederates made one last effort to retake the city on July 4th. The cannon fire and bullets were so intense that they destroyed most of the cemetery. After the Civil War, the town cemetery was moved north of the city to its current site. 
It was originally named Evergreen, but later the name was changed to Maple Hill. Some of the most famous burials at Maple Hill include three of the seven Confederate generals who were from Phillips County, Thomas C. Hindman, James C. Tappan, and Patrick Claiborne. Maple Hill Cemetery is well known for its many elaborate gravestones and monuments and for its terraced landscaping along Crowley's Ridge. One of the most unusual stones at Maple Hill Cemetery is the Dr. Emil Overton Moore Monument. One of the many epitaphs on the stone reads, his errors were the errors of a man, and they stood out in bold contrast with the time-serving, two-faced hypocrites who conspired to have him murdered. On top of the stone is a very detailed sculpture of a dog. The dog's collar reads Pedro. In large letters on the front of the stone is carved the word waiting. On the back, the word fidelity. On the southern side of the monument, the language reads, he possessed marked individuality. He was incapable of dissimulation. Let us remember that after midnight cometh morn. The final side of the monument reads, he is now beyond the reach of blame or praise and love with hope and faith will trust that he has felt the joy that is felt when there are no tears and no grave. So what happened to Dr. Moore? Why is his monument so unusual? According to newspapers at the time, one of Dr. Moore's patients broke his leg and called for him to come and fix it. When Dr. Moore arrived at the patient's home, another local physician, Dr. R.C. Chenault, was already there. The two doctors argued on the porch. Their argument became heated. Dr. Moore made a motion as though for his hip pocket, and Dr. Chenault responded by shooting him in the head. Dr. Chenault claimed self-defense and was acquitted of any crime. Obviously, Dr. Moore's family felt quite differently about the incident. After Dr. Moore's death, his dog Pedro refused to leave his grave. The story goes that when the dog died, the family buried him with his master. If you happen to visit Maple Hill at night and go near Dr. Moore's monument, you can still hear Pedro crying. These are just a few of the interesting stories related to historic cemeteries in Arkansas. Cemeteries are important parts of each town's history, so we should preserve them for future generations. Maybe you can go out to your local burial ground and learn about your town's history. If you want to know more about historic cemeteries in Arkansas, check out our website, www.arkansaspreservation.com.